Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Are Olia granted the ability to time travel, teleport, and surpass physical limits through Sifat al Rahim? Through Sifat al Rahim? Uh, I don't know with what Sifat, like they're looking for a specific door, but different, different topics that the the reality of what was talked about tonight was the ocean of Hayat, that anyone whom wishes to reach to the oceans of eternal life, well what makes them eternal was they were seeking the fountains of knowledge, I means seek the fountain of knowledge, that was the whole symbolism. And the knowledge that they seek was not the, the world knowledges but the eternal knowledge that which is illuminated. My son gave me an example of an ancient, ancient example of a people in a cave, <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> Said there were people in a cave and they're locked up in this cave and shackled and all they're allowed to do is only look at one face of this cave, that's all. And behind them is like a roaring flame. And as a result of the fire behind them, everything is a shadow on a wall because they can only see this cave and it's just shadows. And they busy their entire life giving a description of the shadows they see because the fire is behind them, they can't even see that light. So they only look to the wall and they can only see the casted shadows. And their whole life is the example of these shadows, what it is, what's this shadow mean, what's that. Your greatness then is in your ability to decipher what this shadow means, that shadow means. And every now and then someone's taken away from the shackles and heard screaming and going upstairs and screaming the whole way up the stairs. One such person was taken away who was very beloved by these people. And as a result of going up the stairs screaming, yelling, yelling, yelling until that servant went into the light and realized that he's been set free from this cave. And he was released, went into the light, was so amazed by seeing the sunlight, the nature, the, the true existence of life where he thought the cave was alive but he was being set free by going up these stairs. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And he was so astonished by what he saw and so mesmerized by the sunlight that he lost his vision because he was burned by the light that he's looking at so much and he was so amazed by all these lights and all these realities and his beautific nature. He said that, I got to get back to the people in that cave and set them free and teach them that everything they know is wrong, it's nothing. The real life is out here, not down there. And because so much time in the light when he tried to go back into the cave and to help the people, he could no longer see the shadows that mesmerized them because his vision had expanded to so much light that when he was put back into the darkness of the cave, his, his eyes were not able to see all these shadows and these faint visions because the others who lived in darkness they were able to adapt to that darkness but because he had expanded his vision and horizon of his vision, he went back into the cave, he couldn't see, he couldn't give the tafsirs of, of those cave figures and shadow figures and kept telling him that there's something amazing if we go up these stairs, there's a whole different world, whole different light. 
And all they can say is, you're crazy man, what the heck, you can't see the shadows anymore, you <laughs> lost your mind? What are you talking about these world of lights and grass and all these beautiful things? But I think throughout time there has been these analogies that, you know, if we live this life as a prison and if you're happy being a prisoner and that's the life you want and anyone who comes and teaches you something different. But all the prisoners all they can say is, you're crazy, your knowledges are crazy, you people are all crazy. Because they went up the stairs and they saw the light and they saw God's real paradises and real existence. And when you come back into a bunch of cave people and tell them, look the shadows that you're staring at are not real, nothing from this dunya is real. So when they hear these tafsirs and they hear these teachings and they hear these examples, say, you people are all crazy. So now you see the difficulty. And when he was professing so much to come with him, they eventually just said, it's better to kill this guy because we're happy with our shadows, he's bothering us. And they killed him. Means that, yeah, cave people, they don't really want to leave the cave. Prisoners, they don't like leaving prison, they enjoy being caged up. For the very few that wish to actually leave the prison, well, ahlan wa sahlan, let's go. <laughs> Meditate, contemplate, do the practices and you have to leave the prison to enjoy the paradise. But if you made your prison nice, you put some furniture in it, you got a, a meal that's coming and you're content with the bars, you put some flowers and pictures on your bars then it's difficult to get you out of the prison, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what if your himma is lacking for the world of form? Is this okay? How to balance both worlds when one has never been motivated in the world of form? Yeah, as long as you have a himma for the world of light. Just to say, I don't have a hymn of a world of form and the person, you know, doing inappropriate things, that's the danger of this world right now. These kids just want to, you know, do things and play video games all day long. Then, yeah, they're not going to have any zeal for the world of form. They didn't achieve anything in the world of light, so they lost both sides, and that's the danger. And that can create an extreme hardship as people grow older. But when somebody says, I lost the taste of the world of form, means they meditate, their strong spiritual connection, then usually they don't really make that type of comment because they have a lot of zeal in their spiritual life. Those whom have a lot of spiritual zeal, things come to them because Allah doesn't need them to run around for the world of form. Means they do strong zikr, they do their awras, they do their practices, strong connection with awliya. Well, the whole dunya comes running after them, deals come for them, the gifts come for them, all these, these things. But the one whom doesn't really have that and just say, oh I don't feel like dunya, of course because you want to sleep 20 hours, you want to do a little bit of stuff then play some video games and… Yeah, but that's a danger because as you become whole older this life can be extremely hard that all the prayers of Ya Rabbi don't let us in our old age to be in need. That you know to, to need and be young and to try to go out and work is one thing to but to, to become older and older and to be in need is going to be a difficult life. That's why those whom struggle in the way of Allah Allah takes care of them, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is there anything we can do to make us more sincere and eliminate our hypocrisy? Yes, be of service. This is all the talks are every night about how to be of service and, and how to, to do the khidmat, how to, to enter into the oceans of sincerity. A sincere servant is the one who sits and meditates and says, how am I going to make my shaykh happy? How am I going to make Allah happy, Prophet happy, my shaykh happy? And that's when he's giving the advice, then be of service, put out links, do works, do, do articles, be of uh, service, go out and give food. So they're sincerely seeking Allah's satisfaction and as a result they understand, they have a, you know, a sincerity within their heart when good things come to them, they share from the bounty of Allah 
They don't just always ask, ask and something good comes they run and take it off. They, they, they want to share. They share with the shaykh by giving him gifts, they share with the charity by feeding people and doing services. So they live a life like a family, they understand that. You imagine you, you go get a raise and you don't do anything for your father who all this time was raising you and teaching you. If the, if the community doesn't feel like taking care of their shaykh then what, what, what type of community is like that? So it means everyone has to have a love for their teacher. That's why I said if you're not praying for your teacher with the heck who, who's praying for him? You think the Wahhabis are praying for him? No, they're praying every night that he be dead so that they don't have to deal with this stuff. So if the student doesn't pray for the shaykh then what kind of a sincere student is that? And from the bounty of Allah that he doesn't want to, to do anything, to support anything, to be of any participation with the shaykh. So then no, he just wants to take, so that's not sincere. You come with the sincerity in which you, you we didn't take bayat. We gave that in other talks. Our life is that we gave bayat, that when we came we gave our life in this way. We gave what Allah wanted, we gave what Prophet wanted and we gave what Mawlana Shaykh wanted and all of those were in that way. So it means our life was is this give, give, give and then we gave of our time and then we gave of our heart. These knowledges they were not achieved in an easy way. It's with his shaykh's blood, sweat and tears he achieved these knowledges and by means of that knowledge he's now attracting people. And as a result people are coming because it's a food for the soul. Imagine if every day we don't talk, three days a week we don't talk. We just get on the thing and say, you know what, I like bananas, I like peaches and oranges too and maybe some apples and maybe we're going to cut the apples and we're going to put a little bit of lemon juice. After one week you won't tune in because you say, what the heck is he talking about? So what's making you tune in? Is the zikr, the salawats and then the food, the spiritual food, the realities. So as a result of that you're eating from their tables. And you're eating from the table of somebody whom only wants a Divinely face, doesn't want a station in paradise but just wants to be connected to the Divinely face. So as a result the student's responsibility is support and khidmat. That from what Allah gave to me, imagine your shaykh is sitting right there and you went and got yourself a big plate of kebabs and everything and he's just sitting there with nothing on his table, nothing to eat. Well, what kind of mentality is that? But sincere people they don't think like that. They think whatever has come to me is from his du'as. Whatever was saved from me, look I didn't die when everybody was dying in the last two years. They didn't get sick, not a kid with a cold, nothing. So it means they're sincere and they understood. They understood that this source of blessing, this source of lights, these sources of illuminations then they're like a family that whatever I have is from them. I owe to Allah what Allah wants, I owe to Prophet what Prophet wants and my life is to be under service and under the tarbiyah of that shaykh. That's sincere, not the one always just asking for du'a but you don't see them, they don't do anything, they don't participate in anything. They just know this you know, oh du'a, 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 alhamdulillah but you have to put something in it. You have to have some skin in the game, you know you have to play with us on the field, get knocked around and, and struggle with us, fight with us through all of our difficulties. And then you're, you're in the field, you know what it is, you're participating and then you feel like you're a part of it and that's the whole importance, that's the symbolism. That's why we, we have our identification for Sufi Meditation Center SMC, we have that so that this team we know what we're struggling for, we know the charities and the operations that we're running and so alhamdulillah gives us that whole unity. Shaykh goes around and picks up beads, means all, all the struggling individuals and he has to string them together and keep them on a tasbih. And through the string, itasimu bihablillah, tafarruq, don't separate, don't go off the string of this tasbih of the shaykh, that he found you brought you in and strung you into his group. As a result that his zikr on that tasbih is keeping you 
united and, and illuminated. Don't split from that, life can become very, very difficult. But as a result your life is then, what can I do, how can I be of service? And every day asking ourselves that and that's what he asked every day from Prophet that, what can I do more, how can I do more, how can I be inspired more so that to gain more of the nazar of Prophet upon ourselves. If the nazar of Prophet comes strong on the shaykh then imagine everyone is being dressed by that sunshine because the shaykh carries everyone with his love. If that nazar comes it dresses everyone in that reality with them. So that's why they try to achieve and that's why they're telling the people of those achievements. There's a thousand wells, well you better believe Prophet is looking and is pleased. Thousand wells? How many thousands of people are drinking every day? So that nazar comes, dresses everyone. They're putting reports out now just from the small amount of equipment we gave to pediatric ward. As soon as we gave the equipment they had a one month old child come that was near death, the doctors were convinced the child's gonna die, they don't have the equipment. And our guys who are already there who are doctors said, no we just bought the equipment, it's right there. He said, that very equipment saved the lives of people. This is for what? Not that we're going to make the entire medicine of the one country to be better but I'm responsible for the nazar of Prophet And that, what can I do to compete for that attention? If I do it right everybody should be enjoying their lives protected and illuminated. So everything we're doing is trying to compete for the nazar of Prophet If somebody's not doing anything then they're probably very low on that uh, nazar scale because you come to Prophet for a spoon, a cup or like oceans full. That was the Buddha Sharif. So we're asking for oceans full, not only spoons and cups but for oceans full of his rahmah, his nazar, his ridha and satisfaction by the food, by the orphans, by the, the food services. You should see the barakah and all the trucks. Took out the big truck in Vancouver and I saw thousands of dollars worth of salmon and food and, and, and rizq and sustenance that most people we don't buy for our own homes it's so expensive. But in Allah's way He feeds whom He wants of His servants from His bounty. So it's, SubhanAllah we, haven't, we have not stopped seeing the miracles of these ways. So it just requires people to participate, participate, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi uh, it's really hard for me to deal with my anger, very hard to, to get rid of it and to keep my mind happy. Yeah Qadab is, is and anger is a difficult attribute in last days because of the fire that uh, we released a video from, from many years ago that Mawlana Shaykh described a, a level of uh, shayateen and jinn, not shaitans but jinn that lend themselves to marada, to very bad things in which they exemplify shayateen, haskan and zanadil. And that these shaitans that Prophet had held up within the limits of the sky off of the earth that they found their way back amongst civilization that was 60 years ago so probably 80 years now that these shayateen that are entered into the earth and their purpose is anger and betrayal and fights within the homes to make everything to be separated and destroyed. So this is an immense battle that is taking place and the one whom doesn't come to battle equipped for battle has already lost. So if you write down that this is a spiritual warfare and are you armed for your warfare? If you are then alhamdulillah, if you're not you already lost. 
So then you didn't take it serious, you, you don't know what you're trying to do with it and how did you think it was going to go? So the one who knows, they know. That's why I said, look at the news, you see how what they're doing? Look at this, you see what they're doing? You look at all the signs and these alama to teach you that there's something immensely dark everywhere and destroying people and making people to look ridiculous and disformed and they don't look like men and the women don't look like women and everyone seems to look now like a painted lizard and you think this is normal? No, they are everywhere. So then the believer should look to themselves, if you're a man, do you have a beard? Do you have a turban in your home? Do you wear sunnah clothes? Do you have a ring? Do you have a asa? Do you have all the taweezes that there are popular amongst believers and unpopular amongst the dajjals because of the very reason that taweez works? If it, if it was not harmful to shaitans, he would have told you to put it in your home. The fact that shaitans tell you, don't put it in your home is because it burns them. So do you have all of those? And when you equip yourself with all of those then you can look to say, no I'm, I am prepared for this spiritual warfare and these difficulties that are facing on a daily basis. And as a result I daily, do I do my awrah, do I do my connection, do I play my salawats in the house when I'm not feeling energies to be good, do I keep myself 100% in wudu at all times, trying my best not to lose my state of wudu because that's the time you'll be attacked. So all of those practices then you get the energy book and read about spiritual energy, the perfection of energy, the meditation book on how to meditate and keep the meditation and the connection with the shaykhs. And that's what it's all for. This is all about a preparation and to safeguard people for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi so that they make it. If they don't make it and they lend themselves or give themselves to the darkness and the dark, the anger of darkness that calls from within their being, calling them back into darkness. Anyone who gives themselves to that then they take a path towards darkness and that's the, the difficulty. We said that when black matter is entering into the earth it's like an inner calling of a very, very negative ego and satanic sort of connection that calling people to the innermost negativity. And what was innermost negativity? wants to be normalized upon this earth. So seventy years ago nobody looked like a lizard, nobody, everybody stayed within their oceans of reality. They were born this way, they stayed that way. But the innermost negative character that was supposed to be subdued and put down this dark matter has said, no that's actually what you should be identifying as. Your darkness should be overtaking you as who you are. And the worst of the character, worst of aggression, worst of violence is coming out. Now more and more and they think for every… everything they're going to stand up but they're standing up for shaitans. They're yelling and screaming satanic things against everything from the heaven, the kingdom. So you see this more and more and more and you see now hell opening upon earth and these are the people of Jahannam that they think they're yelling and screaming and that they're right but they're actually manifesting their Jahannam reality with yelling and screaming and, and taking their clothes off and fires are everywhere and it looks like this is, this is what they're going to look like in Jahannam and it's now manifesting onto this earth. And then heavenly people whom the paradise reality, they look like paradise people, they act like paradise people and you can see God's kingdom upon this earth. Who's God's kingdom on this earth? Shouldn't they be clean, shouldn't they be washed, shouldn't they be fasting, shouldn't they be praying? It's God's kingdom. So now you see, they said there is no religion on this earth except Islam now. Every other religion allowed every type of craziness, oh they want to dress as a, in, in a dress and come and preach, okay. They want to do this, okay. They want to do this, okay. There is no religion left, the only religion on this earth in the deen of deen Allah is Islam. The only deen of Allah is Islam. 
Islam is the only religion on this earth right now, has not forsaken anything. No is no, forbidden is forbidden. So and nothing going to change that. So, Izzatullah, Izzat al Rasul, Izzat al Mu'mineen. The only religion on this earth is Islam, inshaAllah. Subhan Rabbi Ya Rabbin Izzat Amma Yasifun. Wa salam al Mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ila sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahbi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqat al Ashbandiyat al Aliyya. Wa sayyiru wa saddatina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.